nutrition. But the kind of a panoramic view that we are exposed to from our training, from a human development perspective, a development communication perspective, national food security perspective, food safety perspective, therapeutic perspective, the canvas is really, really huge. And probably I was the youngest delegate in early 80s to go to Europe from India. I was invited by the British Nutrition Society to come and give a talk. I, at that age, as a PhD scholar, I chaired a session and Dr. Waterloo wanted me to do something like that. I was wondering what made him do that. But after doing my doctorate from All India Institute Medical Sciences and getting a gold medal from Ames, I still left all job opportunities at Ames or anywhere else in the world and prefer to come back to Lady Urban College. Let me tell you about this institution that I represent. I head for almost 14 years now, and before that I studied there and I taught there. So it's a philosophy in itself, very few people understand, and those who know Lady Urban understand it completely. An institution taught in 1929, and it was by Sarojini Naidu and Mahatma Gandhi and visionary people of those times, both British and non-British, and various Maharanis of various states, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay, and Dorothy Irvin, to, as the name comes from, the vice Reen herself. She felt that, or they felt that, in All India Women's Conference, that if India is to get independence, the women of this country, which is 50% of the cadre, needs to be empowered. So with that ethos is this institution, and we have come a long way, almost 87 years by that criteria. We were attached to Imperial College UK till 1950s, before we attached to University of Delhi, or for matter UTC. So it's been a long journey. And today, this institution step, if you open our website, you will find the kind of, the number of awards it's received even in the last five years. Last week, it received an award on Asia's top, the best brand in teachers' education training. It was given in Bangkok by the brand, uh, brand group. And we had the Nina Sibyl Award last, uh, in 2014 on disability studies these are path-breaking studies that we identify all those areas in which India needs to work on development sector, give logistic support. And so most of us are working on several national committees on policy guidelines on inclusive education, on disability studies, early intervention, food safety, food security in the country, green buildings, GRIHA protocol, LEED protocol, uh, and a huge range things, which is beyond the scope of present forum. But I dedicate almost every recognition to this great institution. This is the only institution that has inspired me. It's become my own agenda. I started by being a nutritionist. I am very much proud to be a very strong nutritionist and working on almost all bodies in almost all ministries, several of which I'm chairing. I still come back to dedicate my entire endeavor to this great institution. It is to Lady Irvin that we get an award. Thank you, Dr. Hanvi Naroba. A great institution, and thank you for sharing a piece of your history. Thank you, ma'am. With that, I call on uh, Ma'am Vanita Sehgal, principal of the DPS School, Delhi Public School, R.K. Puram, to hear it from the school perspective. Thank you. We welcome you, ma'am. I was just sharing with her that... Um, I haven't prepared anything about the school. So can I make a general speech? And she said, yes. I would like to talk as a woman. I'm a woman facing the world. A world which asks me at every question, every point a question. If I do something on my own without asking anybody, 
I'm supposed to be very arrogant, very pushy. If I ask people, I'm supposed to be indecisive. If I take my own time and think about things, I'm actually told, act like a man, which I assume means act fast. If I speak without being scared and have the confidence to say what I feel, I'm told, you're too, it's not right, you're too aggressive. It's not womanly like. If I smile too much, I'm weak, I'm using feminine wiles. If I decide I'm going to be very calm and very, very um, strong, I'm told, this is arrogance. So for years of having to hear this and wondering where and how am I ever going to fit the image of all these people who tell me this, and let me tell you, it's not just the men telling me, it's the women telling me too. I decided that I wasn't going to fit into any, any kind of an image or ideal. I was going to be myself. I was going to be what God wanted me to be. If I was going to be nasty, I would do it. If I did my work, I would go ahead and do it. Because basically, I think as a woman, I have so much and so much to give. Of, of course, I hope you realize all the women here when I'm saying I'm a woman, I'm not talking of myself, I'm talking of all women. And of course, one thing which has helped me immensely is being a teacher. When I took up the job, I didn't want to do it. Every year, I would say, okay, bye-bye, I'm not coming back. But every year, I came back. And the reason was the students. I think they keep you alive. They keep you young. They keep you going. And they keep you hoping. I was telling them, I said, I don't feel my age. You don't make me feel my age. Right now, when I'm admitting students in school, I am admitting students of my students who have passed out. I look at them and say, oh my God, I'm that old. I don't feel it. And I think a lot of principals sitting here, I don't feel it. I don't, I hope I don't look it. <laughs> but it's amazing. The teaching faculty, there was a time when we used to be to, when I think people felt a little odd saying, I'm a teacher, because everybody else was a doctor, a lawyer, a lecturer, what's a teacher? And let me tell you, the immense pride I have in saying, I'm a teacher. I have touched so many lives, so many lives. To the extent, if I'm even going to a shop, I'm getting told by the salesperson, look after her, she was my teacher in school, the managers told me this. So it's a job which has given me back so much and so much more. If there's a problem going on in school, it's phenomenal how the parent body and the faculty stands up for you, how the students come up to you and say, are you all right? So I bless God every day, not only for being a teacher, but for being a woman, for having the forgiveness, the understanding, the compassion, the love, the concern, which makes the world go round. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for being the teacher, the professor, and the woman that you are. Thank you for sharing with us your journey. I call on Dr. Vijay Datta, the principal of Modern School. Welcome, sir. Good evening, everyone. Well, uh, as I have been introduced, I am Dr. Datta. I'll tell a bit about myself first and then go on to speak that I have to. Well, I was at the Mayo College Ajmer, an all-boys school, for 22 years. And we had this girls' school that came up across the road later. So we had that mindset, what William Shakespeare said long time ago, frailty, thy name is woman. It took us quite some time. Incidentally, when I left that place, I was the dean. I used to move the school. And my wife was the director of academics at the girls' school across the road. First of all, the uh, old traditional Rajput 
mindset. There was a road dividing. There were two walls, high walls that divided boys from the girls. You can imagine the situation and we held our own beliefs. What we believed in, we believed thoroughly in it. We thought of things like riding, polo, swimming, cricket, and these were the fields where the girls couldn't match us. So we all the time felt one up, one notch above. And it went on for a long while. I was a housemaster, I was with the boys all the time. I have only a son. So you can imagine the way I thought at that point in time. Then I moved to Army Public School, Dakshai and Shimla Hills as a principal. And there we had both girls and boys on the same campus. Staying on the same campus 24 hours. And that's where I got to study how the girls are shaped better than the boys. I thought then about the co-curricular, when they used to sing, when they used to dance, when they used to paint, when they spoke debates. Every field, I got a sense they were a shade better. And that's where my thinking evolved into giving it a thought that, yes, probably we missed out something back there in Mayo. Then, of course, now I had modern school Barakamba, where again we have boys and girls, and my faith is now confirmed, which I developed in Army Public School Dakshai, that girls are no less, they are probably better. I think about the co-curricular, and they went hands down in dramatics, debating, declamation, anywhere they go, they always win. So my way of thinking changed over these years as I stand before you today. I'll briefly talk about education, then I'll come back to what are the factors that probably make ladies better. Uh, well, education today is like an elephant in the land of the blind. Anyone who looks at it, feels it rather, I should say, one who feels the leg of the elephant says education is like a pillar. One who feels the ear says it's like a fan. One who feels the tail says it's like a snake. So is the perspective, so is the way of thinking. How you look at the thing makes all the difference. Coming to the point that why girls are better, because they have a very strong emotional intelligence. There is no doubt about it. Of course, I think of my mother, I think of my sister, as compared to my brother, when I speak this. And emotional intelligence, what Daniel Goldman said long time ago, is very important in today's life, time, and age. It takes you a long way. There was time when uh, IQ was considered to be more important, but definitely today it's the EQ that takes you places. And ladies, I must give it to you here, you are better at it. The sentiments, the emotions, the empathy that you have is any day more. We have a lot of clubs in our school, the Interact Club and the Environment Club. The girls excel in each one of them. In the Interact, they would think about the society more than the boys. They would reach out more often to the homes of the destitutes and give out from the heart whatever is possible, donate, ask others to donate, convince others to donate better, and would give them out more time. So, I think I should 
keep it brief. And once again, say that today as I stand here, I think that the ladies, the girls are no less, in fact, they have overtaken. They have overtaken us, the gentlemen, and we must catch up with the ladies. Having said this, I will conclude with one very simple thought to all the married men here. Whenever you are in doubt, I repeat, whenever you are in doubt, do one thing. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and then do what your wife says. Only through education. Friends, I've come from a con I come from a congregation which is about to be 200 years old. Jesus and Mary congregation was started in 1818, the aftermath of the French Revolution. And the children suffering on the streets, the orphaned, uneducated, parentless children were taken on by our foundress, Saint Claudine, who tried to educate them and make them into blessings in the homes that they are found. And that is our basic uh, principle that for, of education. So we try and educate girls very specially because they are the backbone of every home. They are the educators of the home. So uh, this is where I come from. That's a congregation. I also come from the school, which is going to be 100 years in next, uh, next year. So this is something which I would like to share with you. Uh, 200 years ago, our foundress, St. Claudine, said that we educate students and impart vo vocational uh, training to orphaned and destitute girls. Her goal was to see that her charges were a blessing in their homes and were successful in making God known and loved. Education is the source of material success and spiritual growth. It is an exploration of the external world as well as of the inner self. For me, being an educator for the last almost 40 years or more, my one thing that I want to give it to the girls is the rootedness, the roots which will give wings and the wherewithal to fly. If we are rooted in our own um, basic principles, we are able to fly, we are able to help our students fly. And this is what I am all about. Maybe thousands of children have passed by, and I make sure that they do get, they do know where they come from, their emotions, their um, parental upbringing, their own qualities, their innate uh, potential, which should be realized. And if they have got that, then they have really won for their life. And this is what we have been trying to do in our schools. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you, Sister Janet. It's actually a personal privilege because I myself went to a convent of Jesus and Mary school. <laughs> and um, I know what a privilege that you hold that for the rest of your life as. So thank you for sharing your personal legacy, which is so rare to see that it's, all, it's synonymous with your professional legacy. This is something we don't see every day. So thank you, Sister Janet. And with that, I'd like to call on Lee Allison Sibley a singer, actor, and writer from USA. Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. Namaste. Que se hey. I'm so happy to be here, and I really want to thank my, thank my soul sister, Harbin Aurora for inviting me for this very prestigious award. I want to tell you something.
probably the reason I'm standing up here today is my mother. That's not surprising. I'm sure that a lot of you would say that your accomplishments you can trace back to your mothers. My mother taught me that it's not enough in life just to accomplish for yourself. You must give back. And my husband taught me it's your human duty. So I came to this forum. I've heard lots of wonderful, wonderful speakers. And I came away with something that I want to share with you. My goal in life was never to amass wealth. It was never. It was always to leave a legacy, to make a difference in the lives of children, women, men, and especially the disenfranchised. Now, I was a very shy child, and I was quite unattractive, a real ugly duckling. Yes. But what changed my life was music, music, singing, because I got up at the age of seven and sang on the stage for the first time, and people applauded, and I loved that, and it helped bring me out of my shyness. But what have I done with this music? How have I given back to society with my music? I've done it through cultural diplomacy. Now, there were two events that I would say are most important that I want to share with you today. One is that I'm listed as coming from Jordan in the literature for this conference. Is anybody out there from Jordan? Raise your hand. Nobody. I'm proud to represent Jordan, but I was born in New York. A nice Jewish lady from New York. But I wrote a book about peace in the Middle East. And the title of that book is Jordan's Jewish Drama Queen. I had the distinction of being the sole Jewish person in a school of 1,400 Arabs. And it changed my life for the better. And my legacy is that no one no one can say anything anti-Arab or anti-Muslim in my presence. And I will tell you something else. All the proceeds from my book go to the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. Another pivotal moment in my life was moving to Kolkata. You might notice I'm wearing a kanta sari. Any Bengalis out there? So I became famous because I'm the only American of non-Indian origin to record the songs of Nobel Prize winning poet Rabindranath Tagore. I sing Rabindra Shangit. You can go on YouTube, Lee Allison Sibley, and hear me singing Rabindra Shangit. Ek minute. <laughs> so I'm telling you how that changed my life. What did I do with this Rabindra Shangit? I built schools with all the money I earned from singing. I went out into the worst slim, slums of Tikiapara in Haura. My school, which I did with my brother, Mahmoud Akhtar, started with 200 kids. We have 4,000 now. And we're going to be 7,000 on three campuses in just a couple of years. And that's my legacy. Now, I mentioned my mother. My mother was a working mother. I grew up in a middle-class family. But my mother took me to the first Women's Liberation Day parade down Fifth Avenue with Gloria Steinem in 1969 and bought me the T-shirt. Yes. And not only that, my mother came into my room one day and said, hurry up, get dressed. We're going to march with Dr. Martin Luther King. We're going to march for peace, for civil rights. We're going to march against war. And we're going to join all others 
who believe in freedom and justice for all. And I marched with my mother that day. Now, I've been different all my life. And I did ask Harbeen if it was all right if I could sing a song. And she said, no, just say the come at night and sing at our nighttime events. But I live in Delhi. So I would go home to have dinner with my husband every night. But I do want to sing today the, not, the anthem for peace Universal, I know it in so many languages, but I want you to join me. Please sing the song that I sang with Dr. Martin Luther King. We shall overcome. Please, everybody. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall. Thank you, Lee. That was very, 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 very special. Thank you. I call on Dr. Kiara Hensley. I've just spoken with her mom. She has to leave. They have a train to catch. But we'd like to welcome you so you can share your thoughts with us. Coming from the Eastern Michigan University, welcome. Thank you. Namaste. Good afternoon. Alaupa. I have been profoundly moved by this experience. So I'm, I'm not, and I've been speaking all week, so I'm not going to go into what I do as a leader in representing Eastern. First, I want to just talk about this experience. And I cannot speak about this experience without having us all give credit to the great soul sister that I'm proud and honored to be connected with in work that I believe is going to bring about world peace. Dr. Harbin, the ladies of all, it is a remarkable movement. And these six days have been nothing short of tremendously life-changing, uplifting, and inspiring in terms of the work going on around the globe. This is planet work. And I am so proud and honored uh, that you have taken up the mantle to push this movement forward. It is really profound. I also want to ask people to consider, you know, you have so much in your head after this long week of what do I do with all of this? What can I take back and actually apply to my work? There's a lot. And so, I want to encourage you. Well, first, I want you to take a second. I want you to turn to the person next to you and tell them what you're taking away from this experience and how you're going to apply it when you get back. Just take two seconds. Turn to the person next to you. Tell them what you learned and how you're going to use it. Please, to the person next to you. What have you learned? How are you going to use it when you walk away from here?
in this experience, we've had a range, a real range of opportunities. You know, being in this hotel, this lovely hotel, I do have to give credit to the Pullman and the Novotel, by the way. Uh, the food has been tremendous. The staff has been tremendous. And we've been largely in luxury working, but still it's a lot of luxury. I went out to the streets of Old Delhi and I said, oh, I'm doing comfortable work here in this hotel, but the work, the, the life of Old Delhi is what the work is about. It's about changing the world. I sat here and I enjoyed this hotel, but I will not leave India without Old Delhi in my heart because that is why I am alive. My job as a leader in education, as a leader, a woman leader in the world, is to uplift humanity, is to solve problems. We've got a lot of work to do, people. But you know what? The great work is being done, and I've met human beings here today that I will be connected with for the rest of my life in doing that work. So I want to, and I do want to address a little bit very quickly uh, about men and women and equality. The equality of men and women is, an, is a necessity. Humanity and civilization will not advance until we deal with the issue of the equality of men and women. Now, Baha'u'llah, the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith, talks about the equality of men and women as two wings of a bird. They are both essential. The bird doesn't fly without both wings, right? You need men and women. But the unique thing that always strikes me is you can't flip the wings, right? The right wing is for the right side and the left wing is for the left side. You can't flip the wing. That means men and women have their own unique characteristics that have to exist in order for the bird to fly. Lastly, I want to leave you with a, a quote from the Master Abdul Baha because it inspires me greatly as I leave here and think about my work. He says, anyone can live contentedly in ease and comfort, health and well-being, gratification and felicity. But to remain happy and contented in the face of difficulty, hardship, this is an indication of nobility. Dear friends, soul sisters, soul brothers, you are noble. Now get out there and get the work done. Thank you for this esteemed honor. Bless you all, and I wish you the very best. Thank you, Kiara, for being the embodiment of leadership, a woman embodiment. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And I want, to, I want us to take note that when we did that little exercise that Kiara made us go through, I just heard whispers in the crowd and everyone was sharing that we take back friendships that are going to last a lifetime. And I don't think there's a greater gift than sisterhood and friendships that we do take away from this conference. Thank you so much. And with that, I call on Minakshi Sahani. Ma'am, please speak with us. The principal of the modern school, Vasant Vihar. Welcome. A very good afternoon. At the outset, let me tell you, I'm no great orator. And a podium was the least favored place and the last one I ever imagined myself to be on. But thank you, Dr. Harbin, because this was something beyond my imagination that I'd ever be representing something, an institution, or something that I did or we did together on a platform such as this. So to all you people out there, who are doing big and small things, I think you are living examples of what I think is sensitivity, inclusiveness, um, I would say creativity, conviction, courage, and so much more. And most importantly, I'm sure all of you are great communicators, and that's why you are here, and you are here, and we are here and we are being able to achieve what we are. And, as a, and, and, and part of the theme says we are drivers of the future. Now, what is our future? As an educator, I ask you, who do you think or what do you think is our future? That's a question. 
to all of you. Our children. Yes. And we are all very sensitive about that. So our children and we are the custodians. And I'm here to not leave you with any inspiring stories. I'm here to share my fear because I kept thinking about what I'd share with you, such a diverse group. And I couldn't think of anything except one big fear that I've had for some time now after I read a book. Um, and I'll, I'll share an extract from the book. Of course, it's not verbatim. It's a book written by a cyber forensic psychologist which talks about how, how the, the inf information and communication technology has intruded, invaded, and overwhelmed our lives. So she talks about her first ever experience when she started thinking about these things as she was traveling on a train and across the aisle she saw a woman sitting with a small baby in her arms and uh, the baby started crying and this woman put the baby to her breast to feed it. And while the baby was being fed, the mother pulled out her mobile phone from her bag and very adeptly was swiping it away for the next 45 minutes that the baby was being fed. Um, and I don't know how many of you know, but we educators do, that all the wiring that is happening in the brain happens in the first four or five years of a child's life. All the connections that are established are connections because of experiences, and a lot of that foundation is laid when the children are very young. So, coming back to this incident, when the child was being fed, the child was continuously and gazing at the mother's eyes, looking adoringly at the mother, while the mother was, had her eyes locked elsewhere. Now, when an experience, when, a, when an emotion is not reciprocated, I don't have to tell you what happens. And needless to say, that wiring will not be there. And what the author of this book has to say is, can you imagine what this child will grow up into? Because this is one child who did not have the wiring or is not likely to have the connections in place, the neural connections, to understand emotions because they were never reciprocated. I don't want to give you a, or leave you behind with a dismal picture, but the fact is a reality. We see that around us at all times. Our children swiping away. We are swiping away, not understanding how it's impacting the social fabric. The way I grew up and the way I've changed and the language I speak in the last decade and a half and the way my routine is from the early morning cup of tea that I grew up with to, to my first, my, the first thing that I do in the morning is to reach out for my mobile to see if I've missed any calls or messages. No, I'm not an addict. But, but that's the reality for all of us. So, a middle class girl from a very, very simple background, I, I believe in moderation. And I reach out and I think the only solution for our children may be moderation. And it takes sensitivity to do that. So I leave you with a food of thought and nothing more. And I express my deep gratitude to everybody who made this happen. And most of all, Dr. Harbin Arora. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I think you're more than perfectly suited for the podium. <laughs> Thank you. Phenomenal. Thanks. With that, I call on Dr. Nalini Deka. Ma'am, please, from the Indraprastha College for Women, University of Delhi, with the Vice President. And Vice Principal. Vice Principal. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Harbin, for calling me on behalf of Dr. Sarath, who is not here. She's in Oslo, and she's in a conference there for a while. So she uh, requested me to come and collect the award on her behalf. It is the institution that I'm talking about, that's Indra Prastha College for Women. And uh, she has come in in the last eight years, and she has made a difference, a palpable difference in all realms of the functioning, the administration of the college. I proudly represent her here. For me, I'm an alumna since 1969, 
and now a professor of psychology, and I will be retiring soon. Let me rest, put you at rest about certain things about the human way of adapting. When the telephone came, people wondered what it was doing to us. When um, aeroplane came, Indians said, we are not going to fly the seven seas. So every new technology that comes, comes with an adaptability. Human beings are constantly evolving and adapting themselves to the new realities. The only thing is, the question that you said, answered it yourself, was moderation. As a psychologist, I realized, as somebody else said, the genes keep adapting and changing as a result of the environment that we find ourselves in. And that's a fact, so we shouldn't have to worry. We are here in the present and we do the best for what we are here today. The future will look after itself. Thank you, ma'am, for leaving us on these very deep words. I call on Dr. Suman Sharma, principal of the Lady Sri Ram College for Women, University of Delhi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I like to start with thanking Dr. Harbin Arora and WEF for giving me this opportunity and also conferring the award. One of the previous speakers, Dr. Vinita Sekal, she was speaking about the role of the teacher. I fully agree with what she said. Teacher's influence is really great. It was my school teacher in Lady Avin School, Mrs. Sujata Mukherjee, who had a great influence on me. She used to teach civics and I never liked civics. The way she made the classes interesting very humane, very helpful. I started liking the subject and later on I opted for political science honors. Another teacher who really influenced me was Professor Muni from JNU when I was doing PhD. His grasp of international affairs and the South Asian solidarity that he ingrained has always helped me out. This award ceremony and also the award that is being conferred, I think, a lot of the stakeholders deserve thanks. Elisa, I usually say that it's not only that our students excel in academics, it's also in extracurricular activities, co-curricular activities. And something that makes Elisa different is a very strong sense of social responsibility. We get a lot of students from vulnerable section and a lot of senior students do help them, nurture them and mentor them. Elisa also has got one of the highest grades in NAC. We are one of the first, uh, one of the first ten ranked by NIRF and 
today itself, in the new India today, it ranks LSR as number one in liberal arts. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for your words and for the outstanding job you do at creating powerhouses like yourselves at your institute. We all know Lady Sri Ram College and what it stands for. So thank you for that. With that, I call on ma'am Abba Sehgal, the former principal of the Sanskriti School. Welcome, Abba, ma'am. Good evening. I begin with thanking all the speakers over here for having given me uh, the basis, the, the food for my, what I have to say just now. And uh, I will really begin with what Vanita had to say. You know, Vanita has been an old friend and uh, we go back a number of years. And today again, Vanita, you've come to my rescue as a good friend because I'm taking off from what she's saying. You know, she, uh, she said, she started her speech by saying that we really don't know what to do as women. If you are docile, then we are criticized. If you are aggressive, we are, we are criticized. We come across as strong individuals. We are like, you're very strong. You should not be so... And uh, all of us empathize with that, don't we? We, we all uh, agree to this, that we, we really do not know what we should be. You know? uh, so uh, I completely agree with what she has to say. And, and, uh, and when she was speaking, I was, I was reminded of uh, the year 2000, when I decided that I'm going to take up an assignment abroad. I got an opportunity to head a school in the Middle East, and uh, where I had to leave without my family. And uh, so I have a husband who said, fine, you want to go ahead with your career, please go ahead and do it, you know, go, go on. So he was really supportive, of, uh, supportive and the family was really supportive about the whole thing. But who were the ones who criticized me? Everybody else around me, the friends and people. Oh, you're leaving your family behind. And you're, what kind of a woman are you? Is a career more important or is a family more important? So I heard all those kinds of things. I even heard things like people came to me and asked, is everything all right between you and Mukul? Yeah, Mukul is my husband, you know, they, they, uh, because uh, they could not, could not understand why I would leave a happy married life and pursue a career. Uh, I think I did that because uh, A, you know, as a child, I was brought up uh, with, uh, with, with that feeling of independence uh, to be able to follow my own passion. My father gave us a lot of, uh, a, a lot of confidence in ourselves. Then uh, we had a singer over here who said that her mother influenced her immensely in, uh, in making her do things out of the ordinary. My mother did the same thing. I didn't go for any marches. I did not go for any protests. But I did do a lot of theater. I did do a lot of uh, out-of-the-box things. You know, she encouraged me to do those things. Now, that was, I mean, that's not a mean thing from the time, from the times that I belonged to, and I came from a small town. Uh, the uh, girls were not supposed to be doing those things. You know, you're not supposed to be moving around with theater-looking people. But, uh, um, but she allowed me to do all that. So she created that passion in me. She created that enthusiasm in me. And I think that has lived on. So, and and that is the enthusiasm which really made me, uh, which motivated me to decide for myself what I really wanted to do. Now, I didn't become a, a teacher just like that, you know, uh, in thinking that, oh, this is what I want to do and I'm going to be a teacher. It didn't happen like that. I was actually getting trained to be a beautician. I wanted to do something in life and I thought beautician will be a great thing for me. I loved beautiful people and, and loved makeup and I loved fancy dresses and nice, and nice clothes. So I thought that's after my, my interest. Yes, I like doing that. So I thought I'll become a beautician. Now, teaching just happened by chance. It came upon uh, the founder principal of uh, DPS, the school which Vanita heads at the moment. Uh, Mr. Lugani uh, just happened to meet me. He needed a teacher. He said, why don't you come and teach? Now, I went to teach with a lot of attitude. That's not what I want to do. I want to become a teacher. I want to become a beautician. Now, the moment I entered the class, the moment I started interacting with the young ones, 
Each was, I, it was like a moment of enlightenment for me. I knew that this was it. This is what I wanted to do for myself for the rest of my life. So there was that passion. There was that complete connect with students. And Vanita rightly said, there are so many things which I'm, I'm, quoting, I'm taking from, one, from Vanita's speech because we worked together and we, uh, we kind of think alike. Uh, the, really what keeps us going and what keeps us so young in our minds and in our spirit is our students. You know, they, they keep us on our toes. And, and you know, we, I would, it would be a fallacy. It would be a complete hypocrisy to say that we are teaching children something. We are not teaching them anything. They are the ones who are constantly teaching us the lessons of life. They are the ones who are really, really making us what we are. I feel that I'm a changed person. I have been, in teach I, I have been a teacher for 36 years. And in 36 years, I've seen changes in my own personality. I've learned what patience is all about. I've learned what compassion is all about. I've learned how to be a good listener. I've learned how to be flexible in my approach to people, not to be judgmental. They, all this has been taught by my students, and I cannot thank them enough. They have been, and I cannot consider myself more blessed that, uh, uh, that this happened to me, this, uh, this profession happened to me. Uh, to Minakshi, I would say, you know, she, she said that we are really in times where, um, uh, you know, I, I was reminded of the advertisement where the child comes out of the mother's womb and runs to the computer and starts doing um, and his uh, computer thing. Uh, let me tell you that this is a reality which we have to contend with. Uh, they are digital natives. These children, they are teaching us all the time uh, how to become computer savvy. But it is the job of us adults, you know, it, for the teachers, the parents, to develop those aesthetics in them, to keep us, to keep them grounded, to make them appreciate the colors of the Gulmohar. You know, the, the, this is the time when Delhi is full of those beautiful flaming orange uh, orange flowers. So if we are, if like that mother, we are on the cell phone, then we are really doing great disservice to our children. If we get excited about the Gulmohar flower, we get excited about, um, about the laburnum's yellow, our children are bound to appreciate. They are bound to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be appreciative of these aesthetics. So let us not kind of start talking about in our times it was like this and this now it's like that. Our times were as bad or as good as these times. Uh, it's just that we love to exaggerate about our times. We feel that our times were really nice and very good and whatever, whatever. They, they were, we were as naughty as um, whatever, you know, as these children are. So uh, let us appreciate that. I have now superannuated. I'm, I'm not with, uh, uh, with, so to say, with the children any longer. And my only fear, Vanita, is that I'm very soon going to start looking old. Uh, you know, it's just been very, uh, it's been very recent that I have, uh, uh, that I'm away from the children. So maybe the hangover is still there. But I have to get back to children. I have to be with the, uh, with the learning. I'm not going to be educating the children, but I have to learn from them all the time. I have to learn their enthusiasm. This is the journey of my life. And uh, the theme of, your, of, your, of your, this conference, which is to create and, and uh, innovate and discover and to move, can, could not have been more apt than for this panel. You know, we, that's exactly what we are doing all the time. In fact, let, us, let me also end by telling you that we have to innovate all the time, not only in our classrooms, in our schools, but even at home. We are constantly making strategies. As a young uh, mother of two, I was always making strategies for my children, you know, how to ensure that they, because the, that's a reality. We have to be, somebody said that we have to be family persons and we have to be career people. We have to innovate all the time, innovate with, with the uh, strategies for our parents, for our children, and also for our husbands. It's, it's, it's important that we, we, we do that because, you know, they really face the brunt of everything. And uh, um, so we need to understand that. We need to appreciate that. So, I mean, my husband's sitting right here. So thank you, Mukul, for, uh, for, uh, for the immense, for being understanding. And I hope I've been able to innovate 
well enough in, in the 36 years of my career. Thank you so much, Rolo. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You said you wanted to be at the onset of your career. You said you wanted to be surrounded by beauty. And by beauty, you were surrounded by choosing to be a teacher and for being an exemplary one at that. Thank you. 36 years is a long time to dedicate to one profession. Many lifetimes for some of us. <laughs> Thank you. And with that, I'd like to call on our last speaker for this illustrious panel. I call on Dr. Pratibha Jolly the principal of the Miranda House, University of Delhi, another epic institution. Good evening, friends. Uh, what a pleasure it is, and Harbeen, thank you so much. And also, I apologize for being one of the silent ones. I wasn't very sure what we are expecting here, but let me say it's been an incredible, incredible afternoon. I've learned so much, and I'm so glad that I'm the last speaker and I speak after you, Abha, because you actually have just summarized what my own life's uh, mission is all about. So let me simply say that, you know, I don't know why I'm the principal of Miranda House, but I'm so glad that I took the job when I did, I pulled out of my research lab, because I think it gave me a mission in life. Uh, well, uh, we are talking about our personal stories, and uh, uh, mine has been a bit different from everybody else's. Um, School was great fun, and I learned many, many things at that point that sometimes, you know, uh, schools don't understand students. So very often, you know, one time when I didn't want to go to school was because I discovered that I had done 20 pages of the exercise book when I was supposed to do just one. And I didn't have enough time to go rubbing because I thought the teacher was going to get pretty, pretty mad that I had run across the pages. But I think it was good, and I realize now that the best moments were sitting up in the loft or under the bed and reading many, many books. Uh, high school, and it's interesting because uh, I must point out, connecting dots is important. We are not here as individual institutions competing with each other. But the fact that Suman, Babli Moitra, and I went to the same school, and there are five of us from that school who head institutions in University of Delhi is extremely important. So letting up in school was a great experience. Um, you had to go, uh, you could get off the assembly if you played. So I played basketball. And there was never a very hard, well-developed court. You had to pick pebbles if you were late. And to learn to, and so one of my favorite things was, of course, the sports field. You did theater and you painted. And it was great fun because, you know, you went to the Shankar's uh, uh, international painting competitions. And, uh, well, I got an award, but these used to be lovely little childlike paintings. But the one who sat next to me also got an award and has continued to do so and is a much celebrated uh, artist of the country, and that's a Kaur. Kaur. So a school can make so much out of you. Uh, but, well, as you become an accelerated student, you make choices. So I often thought that I would continue to play basketball, but I was destined to be a scientist. And uh, that's where, well, if you accelerate it, you get pushed into the sciences. And I did so with great, great, uh, well, personal choice. I became a physicist. And I thought that, well, you know, I actually I don't really believe in role models. But when you're growing up, the stories are such wonderful ones. And you believe, oh, yes, like Marie Curie, I will be there in a lab. And there I will be spending a lifetime and a journey into uh, research and discovery. So all children of the time, uh, when I was growing up, the Jurassic ages, uh, thought like that. And very soon you realize that not everybody is going to be a Marie Curie or a Einstein. But due to some personal choices, I decided not to go abroad for my PhD. I continued to be in India. And then I did get a job in Miranda House, and I thought, one year here, and then I'm off for my postdoctoral research in Ivy League universities. And uh, I came into this classroom. I trained as a, um, you know, my PhD was in quantum physics, high energy physics, computational physics. And I come in as a theoretician, and I hated my teaching laboratory classes. 
Theory was great fun, classes were great fun, and lectures, but I hated the lab work because it was such a cookbook approach. So I asked my colleagues, say, well, you know, can I escape from here? And the turning point was that we had been working for rural science education, and my mentor there said, well, well how about project-based learning? And way back in 80s, the first funded project for learning through investigative projects was funded by Government of India, and that changed my life. I just quit on all that was the cookbook approach. I created a lab of my own for undergraduate students, worked with entire Miranda House and St. Stephen's. This one is for you. Where so the entire St. Stephen's class worked with me on projects and having for women in particular and accelerated students in particular, a lab of your own where you can work 365 into 24 hours and innovate was important. One published with them, one learned with them. So thank you, Abha. A journey is one of learning with students. Coming in as a theoretician, learning to do electronics, fabricating things, putting on my boots, you know, protected young woman going into the big bad chani chalk and getting components and fabricating equipment was a great journey. From there, pioneering education research in physics and getting hugely funded grants and being and leaving a permanent job to take on a contractual research scientist post for 14 years in Department of Physics. That was what I thought I'd like best, traveling the world, having international collaborators, and going forward. And one day, a call and saying, well, go walk the talk and take on the role of a principal. I said, not me. I'm a researcher, and at the peak of my career, and here I am, and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and this is my life, this is my mission. And then I sat back, and I went and told my dad, I said, you know what? We criticize, and if a team leader says, go apply for a job and take it on, if I say no, tomorrow, I will lose my right to criticize, and that's when I decided I should go, and I had a misconception. So I never saw my principal. Principals do nothing. They're the most boring people in the world. And so I said, well, I'll write my books, and I'll continue my teaching. And when I went, well, there was another trial by fire period, but that's not important. Miranda was extremely run down. And to have a run down institution is not OK. So since then, 365 into 24, a research into a different direction, building an institution, art in a different direction, experimenting with a different medium, which is concrete, bricks, mortar, and then learning with the students. And here I said, walk the talk. All my talks I gave, I began with, folks, the classroom is dead and long live a different learning. And that learning was project-based learning. So I had to walk the talk, and I had to say, yes, the classroom is dead. The college idea is outdated. We live in a lovely, lovely connected world. It's hands-on, minds-on, hearts-on. And therein began a journey. And therein lies a mission. The great institutions all over. It doesn't matter who's on the top, we are. Others are, we have our strengths. Students also, I think it's meaningless to say because individuals are ever so differently oriented. But I think learning with them, running off from boring classrooms on excursions, sometimes with the whole class, sometimes with just four or five of them, and still walking down to the office in the morning, sari or no sari, shooting baskets with the students is where my life is, and I think this job gave me a mission in life. One, to learn. Two, never to hold a grudge. Three, if you criticize, go walk that talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're delighted to have this conversation end on this hopeful, beautiful note. Hands on, minds on, hearts on. Thank you so much for this delightful conversation. And with that, we come 
to the initiation of the award ceremony for this illustrious panel. And I'd like to call on Padmashri recipient Dr. Anuradha Porva to accompany Dr. Harbin Arora in felicitating our awardees this evening. We'd like to call on Ms. Manakshi Sahani from New Delhi to come and accept the honor. Congratulations, you are the woman of the decade in academia. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Please do rise. Let's put our hands together and give them the honor. Gentlemen deserve on the stage. Calling on Dr. Nalini Deka on behalf of Dr. Babli Moitra Sarab to accept the honor as the woman of the decade in academia. Thank you. Please put your hands together. Calling on Dr. Anupa Sidhu from the Lady Urban College, New Delhi. Congratulations, ma'am. You are indeed an inspiration to us all. Once again, congratulations, sir. You are indeed an iconic leader in academia. Our next awardee is Vanita Sehgal, a woman of the decade in academia. Congratulations, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen,
Nachike Joshi. Nachike, please come and accept your honor as an iconic leader creating a better world for all. An entrepreneur and political social leader from India. to the valedictory session, the concluding session today. And I request all of you to be here for this special moment. We will be taking a, a large group picture for the official banner of WEF 17 right after this. So please don't go away. Please stay here. And to put it all back into melody and harmony, we have with us the Melody Queen of India, Anuradha Paudwal. Everyone, please give a warm round of applause to our beloved guest of honor at the closing of the Women Economic Forum 2017, who is with us today. Every session we feel so, but it's on. Everybody, may I request you to please take your seats. This is the concluding session. Before, before we say our goodbyes and thank yous, uh, which we have been saying in any case throughout the event to each other, but please stay here. It's a very special moment to have with us Anuradha Ji, who, as we all in India know, that we uh, had Lata Mangeshkar Ji, who's known as the Nightingale of India, and then we thought, that's it, till Anuradha ji came along and we said, oh my God, 
this can continue. We have not just one nightingale, but many nightingales in India, and the talent just needs to be discovered and given a platform. And Anuradha ji's sweet, melodious, devotional voice is there with us as part of many, many songs that we have heard. So here we are with the lady with the golden voice. So let's make the most of it. Anuradha ji, a very warm welcome on the closing session of the Women Economic Forum 2017. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure um, coming here. Thank you, Harbin. And um, thank you all so much because uh, in my profession, uh, it's very rare that I get to meet, uh, you know, this kind of talent and uh, you get to hear such uh, great people. So thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you. Tell us a little about your growing up years and the encouragement that you got to hone your singing talent and who were the influences around you who, who sort of, uh, you know, pushed you into doing what you do? Uh, well, it's... Uh it will come as a surprise to most of you that uh, I was never wanting to come into the film industry. And I belong to a uh, normal middle class family where uh, I'm talking about 50 years back, okay? Right. And my father, he said that, um, ke gaati nahi hai. Yeah, which is what we just heard as yes, well. Yes, yes, because problem, you know, yes. and uh, I was extremely fond of singing, but I never intended coming into the film industry. My mother was very very keen that I should sing at least one song to be recorded but my father for my father it was a strict no no he used to say no you should uh, be educated and uh, it's purely by chance that I have come into this uh, industry and um, then of course I have so many people to thank the innumerable music directors who worked upon me because um, since I had never intended coming into this film industry, I never took a formal training in music. It's only Lataji that I listened to and uh, I started doing my riyas from is, that. Is that, is that, you never like took formal training and you, no, I didn't. you used to do riyas yes, and that's yes. how it's, I think I heard Sonu Nigam <laughs> also talk like that, which is wonderful. There's hope for people like me then. So, Absolutely. Yes, it's, it's Absolutely. Yes. yes. And um, in this uh, journey of uh, my musical career, uh, of course, I had the inspiration of my mother, but uh, one thing I would definitely like to emphasize here is that I would not be Anuradha Paudwal had it not been for my mother-in-law wow. and my uh, father-in-law and my in-laws. And um, I want to, I want to uh, share an incident that happened. My father-in-law, he was very particular. He was, he was very keen that I should. Uh, sing a song with Asha ji, you know, because my husband was a, a music director, he was a music arranger, and uh, he worked a lot with Asha ji and Lata ji. So my father-in-law always used to insist, you know, that I sang at, sing at least one song with Asha ji. And my f uh, husband was a strict professional, so he said, no, it's not a joke. Like, you know, you just can't, she's not trained, and you can't just uh, get up and uh, sing a song with somebody like Asha ji. And it just so happened that uh, when my husband was traveling, uh, he was on a tour with uh, Mukesh ji and Lata ji, uh, my father-in-law passed away all of a sudden. And it's uh, about four or five days later on, you know, I get a call from Lata ji's brother saying that uh, we want to record a song on such and such a day. So I said, it's not possible because my father-in-law just passed away. And the date that you are asking me to sing and record is his uh, the 13th day you know so I refused and when I came up and my mother-in-law said who called so I said uh, Radhana ji has called and he asked me to sing so she said what did you say so I said no I refused ma'am because it was not possible he said no it was your father-in-law's wish that you become a singer so you should go and sing that is something you know that day I feel would have decided my destiny, whether I was to become a singer or not. But the innumerable hours that my mother-in-law, uh, you know, put into bringing up my children. So whenever I was touring, I always knew that 
my children were in the best of hands and i knew that there was there was somebody better than me looking after my children so today in this uh, you know there's so much being spoken about uh, uh, women empowerment and uh, you know i personally feel that uh, the empowerment really you know uh, what a woman can give a woman is something very different so you know I and uh, we should not uh, underestimate the uh, importance of having a joint family because i think sanskar usi se aate hain so beautiful and uh, you know sometimes uh, i have seen very often that we are ready to make compromises with our bai or somebody like that you know but we are not willing to make compromises with our own yeah. people who are our own blood so i really really uh, feel you know that uh, we should with all this empowerment we should also bring back the culture of a joint family very beautifully said uh, anuradha ji this is the last session of the 6 day forum we've had 520 sessions and i actually thought we had said everything heard everything for this edition little did i know with my uh, ignorance that <laughs> the last word still needs to be said and we had not yet celebrated the mothers in law Absolutely. we had celebrated the mothers but we had not celebrated the mothers in law so thank you thank you for bringing that very important lesson that even in the last moment and even in the last drop of water it can quench someone's thirst Absolutely. so never underestimate the power of the last word and thank you so much for bringing that home and 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 balancing all our perspectives yes, in that very absolutely. sobering thought yes. so thank you so much thank for that you. and also like subhash chandra ji he was with us uh, from ztv uh -huh. earlier he also spoke about the joint family actually in the in the united kingdom when i was there recently in london i was reading a magazine krishna ji is also here mm -hmm. and it said the return of the joint family even in uh, in the west and of course they are starting to do it because of monetary reasons because it works cheaper now to you know live in one flat and pay the rent of one flat rather than six people of the same family paying the rent six times over of six different flats but while it started through a financial reason they have discovered the emotional advantages absolutely. of doing so as well absolutely which is what you're saying return to you know the, the joint, the joint family. family i feel uh, children who grow up with their uh, grandparents are more secure and stable so yes so i think uh, when we are um, all of us are working towards women's uh, empowerment and the girl child and all that let us not forget what abha said it's all about moderation and it is um, the grandparents uh, there can be no substitute uh, to the grandparents you know yeah. uh, what they can uh, imbibe in us and i think all the grandparents and all the mothers in law are um, very broad minded and they look upon their uh, daughters in law as their own daughters so i think uh, let us all also work towards that absolutely very beautiful i think without much ado I, uh, some of you will have questions over here and anuradha ji will be happy to take them uh, any questions here please song no questions no questions no questions asked <laughs> that that's the advantage of being a singer no beautiful. questions asked <laughs> yes rohit yes it's um, uncanny and very strange that the first film that i sang for was abhiman where i sang a shlok you know uh, so the gods were there with me reminding me that i have get, i have to get into the devotionals and today when uh, tamma tamma has become such a mega mega hit it's in a film called badrinath ki dulhaniya so the gods are still there this was um, stuti ओंकारम बिंदु संयुक्त नित्यम ध्यायन्ति योगिनः कामदं मोक्षरं चैव ओंकाराय नमो नमः दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट आई दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्तुति एंड द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट आई स्टूड इन फ्रंट ऑफ अ माइक इन माय करियर एज अ singer 
I want to ask you, there's so much of uh, spirituality in, in, the, in the soulfulness in the way you sing. I was asking um, a lady, she's part of, um, uh, now they don't do so many CDs. It's called Cosmic Music CDs down mm -hmm. in Chennai. Mm -hmm. And uh, the singer is Gayatri. And her music, when she used to sing shlokas, they were so soulful. I actually called, found yellow pages. You know, I didn't know the, her number. This was many years back. And I, I wanted to speak to her saying, what is it that gives you this soulfulness in when you sing or when you record, even when it's a group of musicians? And these were a group of musicians from different countries. Uh -huh. So what is it? Why is it different from any other music that I hear when you sing? And she shared a very special thing. And she said that before we start recording, we actually have a very uh, serene environment, like we have our gods and goddesses, whoever we worship. And we do our, you know, we sort of sing not in a studio, but we feel we do our rituals as if we are offering the song as a devotion to the deities we worship. So there's a very sacred environment before we start singing. Can you tell us a little about what gives your voice the soulfulness? Well, I would say <clears throat> um, from a very, very young age, I have always been uh, a devout person. I won't say uh, religious because uh, my father and my mother, they, they just knew Sai Baba and, uh, you know, we had, yes. And uh, it was not like the Devi and the Dev and the rituals and all that. But I was, I don't know, for some reason, I was always a devout and I was always a devout. And probably that was one of the reasons that, uh, you know, I never had too many ambitions of... Uh, coming into the film industry or something like that. So I took very naturally to the devotional music that I started singing. Would you like to sing your favorite song? <laughs> ah, oh, good Lord. Lord. Okay. Well, I don't have the lyrics here. Um, if any of you all know, I would want you to join. Shri Ramachandra Kripalu Bhajamana Harana Bhava Bhaya Darunam Shri Ramachandra Kripalu Bhajamana Harana Bhava Bhaya Darunam Beautiful. Thank you so much. Beautiful. I think we won't, we'll stop asking her questions and we'll keep on asking her to sing. <laughs> Anything else, Shruti? Let me uh, let me sing uh, two lines of another song. Dheere dheere se meri zindagi mein धीरे धीरे से दिल को चुराना तुमसे प्यार हमें है कितना जाने जाना तुमसे मिलकर तुमको है पताना I have grown up on those songs so you take me back down memory lane it's I can't even tell you, it's giving me goosebumps right now. This is so beautiful. Absolutely. But you must hear this thing. You know, there are so many people that I meet and every day they sing, age no bar. They tell me that we have listened to your And in one of my program, God bless him, a person who was 95, he was a chief guest and he said that Anuradha ji ka to mein kya kahun, bachpan se mein gaane inke sunta aya hoon. And my son was sitting there and he said, Dada ji not bachpan, it must be your pachpan. Which one did you have? Zindagi Zindagi, 
I think I, we should listen to the youngsters a little. One tamma tamma should be done. <laughs> the funny part about tamma tamma is, you know, whenever I tell the people in the audience, I am I am really thrilled because all these years after I stopped singing for the films, I was uh, always, you know, this thing came in my mind that how would my voice sound today on a uh, current uh, actress, the actresses of today, and. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, I get a call and they say, how do you feel about Tama Tama? I said, Tama Tama what? They saying, Tama Tama, it's a big hit. I said, yes, it was. He said, they said, no, no, it's been, again, it's become a mega hit. So I listened to it. I went on the YouTube and I saw, and I felt so happy, you know, when I saw that uh, on uh, Alia Bhatt. And then after that, of course, wherever I went for my program, I kept telling people that my song is a big hit. Hua hai. And I said, Tamma Tamma, and they used to look at me like this. They did total disbelief. So uh, just uh, <laughs> the other day I was in Bangkok for a marriage, and they must have played Tamma Tamma almost 200 times there. And uh, DJ asked the audience, Ki, Aap jante hai, Tamma Tamma kisne gaya hai? And I was sitting right in front, and they said, Bappi Leri. You know? <laughs> so that Om Jai Jagdish Hare is always going to be there on my face and I think, um, well, that's it. So you want me to sing one uh, line of Tama Tama? Yeah. Will you sing with me? Yeah. Because Tama Tama can't be sung without the Aha. Ah. Right? You want everyone to stand up? No, no, you can stand up or sit down. Tu Premi, Aha. Main Premi, Tu Razi, मैं राजी फिर क्या डैडी क्या हम्मा एक बस तू ही प्यार के काबिल सारा जहां है निकम्मा तमा तमा लोगे तमा तमा लोगे तमा 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 लोगे Tama, tama, lungi, tama. A big round of applause for Anuradha Paudwal. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vinay ji. Thank you, Krishna, for inviting me all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Please. Jo sawal bahut zaruri saari log poochna chahte hain. Kyu hat gai aap film se? अब क्यों नहीं गा रही आप प्राइवेट गजल भी नहीं गा रही फिल्म नहीं गा रही मैं कहती, वो क्या वजह है मैं कहती हूँ सी आई वाज इन द फिल्म इंडस्ट्री फॉर अ लॉन्ग लॉन्ग टाइम राइट फ्रॉम 1973 टिल uh, 1992 1991-92 जिस वक्त यू नो आई आई विल नेवर कॉल माय सेल्फ अ स्ट्रगलर बिकॉज मेरी कभी एम्बिशन थी नहीं इस इंडस्ट्री में आने की I was happy uh, with whatever I got and even till date, I'm very happy and a very satisfied soul. I'm very happy. But when the song of the hero came, You are my friend. After that, 
एक ह्यूमन नेचर होती है टू एक्सपेक्ट मोर मोर ऑफ द सक्सेस विच डिड नॉट हैपन दैट टाइम बाय द वे ऑफ सॉन्ग्स दैट आई गॉट जो भी गाने मिले चार चार लोग थे तो एक लाइन इधर एक लाइन उधर इसी तरह से चलता आया एंड देन आई वॉन्टेड टू डू समथिंग इन डिवोशनल सो आई अप्रोच अ कंपनी एंड आई सेड कि I want to do something in devotional, and I was told कि नहीं नहीं आपका devotional में market नहीं है तो कोई लेने के लिए राजी नहीं है You see how destiny is, and uh, तो उन्होंने कहा नहीं हम ये नहीं करेंगे वो नहीं करें And what I what I uh, noticed is जो मैंने experience किया it's a very uncertain line, and it it uh, every day even if you do a PhD today, tomorrow again you have to go and sit in the kindergarten. which was which i was not prepared to do and you had to depend upon the producer you had to depend upon a director you had to depend upon a, you know the times alag wo uh, tha and then the film had to be a hit to so many kai baar aise hua hota tha ki gaane hamare bahut acche hote the kisi film mein lekin koi aur gaane promote ho kiye jate the and in spite of doing your best so it was a very uncertain line so I wanted to and uh, devotionally inclined to me hamesha thi so I wanted to move on to the devotional field lekin uh, since I am a devotee of Mata Rani uh, Kali ji ke mandir mein I went in Calcutta and I said ma I am not you know I won't say ki mujhe film industry mein ye wo but I would like to come to devotional but let me leave the industry when I am at the peak If I come on the peak, I will leave it, and that's when Ashiki, Dilip, Ke Manta, and one after the other, you know, वो जब वक्त था, उस वक्त फिर मैंने वो माँ के चरणों में छोड़ दिया. Because I I uh, really feel that uh, more than the entry, it's the exit which is more important. You should always be remembered. You know, like I feel happy when people ask me. Uh, आपने क्यों छोड़ा पीपल डोंट आस्क मी आजकल आपका कौन सा हिट है यू सी द डिफरेंस सो आई थिंक दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड यू शुड नो वेन टू एग्जिट एंड उसकी कृपा से होता है बिकॉज वेन एवर यू आर एट द पीक यू वॉन्ट टू गो ऑन सो उसी की कृपा से ये होता है कि येस दिस इज द राइट टाइम Thank you so much Anuradha ji you're here today and we have a felicitation for you Thank you so much ma'am and as a mark of our gratitude and to bestow on you this honor of you being with us we'd like to present to you this little token of our affection and declare you an iconic woman of the decade in music and spirituality stay on stage anuradha ji for a second to take a group photograph with everybody in this room some of you can stand here at this level some of you can join here on stage let's do a group picture with whoever's here right now <laughs> Everyone who's been part of the team here please 
to the picture. The ladies on that side, left side. Join the party, everyone. Doesn't matter where you stand. Come. The students on that side as well, I invite you to join us. The students as well. All the men in the room, all the men in the room, please feel free to join us. You're very much part of this. Come on, let's wave our hands too. We've got the single with us as well. Hello. Hello. Okay, can we just uh, switch off the music, please? Can we switch off the music? Okay, we need a good serious picture. Okay, everyone, which is our main camera? Which is the main camera? Here, this is the main camera. Okay. Here. Ladies and ladies. <laughs> This has to be the picture of 2017, but on the count of three, we will laugh. No, we will just laugh. Jump is the third stage. Okay, ready? Can I request hotel staff to kindly remove the chairs here, please? Hotel staff, can I request you to remove these chairs, please? Quickly, thank you. Okay. On the count of three, please. We will laugh. We'll do that. We'll do that. One, two, three. Laugh! You can't hear it. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Laugh! Okay, now this is going to be punching in the air, but be careful. Please do not hide the face of the person on your right. Okay? So, on the count of three, we're going to be punching. Okay? Okay. All right. One, two, three, punching! Okay, one more. One more, one more, one final time. One final time. Can I request Tabish Rajat also to join the frame, please? Yes, please. Everyone here, join the frame. Everyone Rajesh ji, everyone. Please, everyone here. Okay, go in, go in. So, I'm going to be here. Come in, come in. Okay. Although I want to stand there, but maybe next time. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my ex-wife is also here. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Where's he? Where's he? Where's Harbin, ma'am? Can I get a slot next to Harbin, ma'am, please? Okay. This is going to be one hell of a picture for me. Okay. So we all punch in the air on the count of three. Please look at the camera. 
One, two, three, punches! Thank you, thank you everyone. And let's give a big applause to one lady here. Our dearest, most beautiful, Harbin Ma'am. Thank you so much. Whoa! Thank you all. Without the teamwork, everybody here backstage, in the office, you, every one of you is the backbone. Without the team, this doesn't work. I don't know who to start thanking. I'm just going to thank Raindrop Media and Rohini Ayer for getting us all the celebrities here in a candid conversation with everyone. I'd like to thank ITV Network for covering some of the sessions and being a partner. Business World Group and the magazine Anurag Batra, are you here? Thank you so much. Coca-Cola and Thick Shake Factory for keeping down the heat. ABP Live for the new sessions telecast. Pullman Hotel for being the host and many, many others who made this rock. Yes, I'd like to thank all the volunteers, all the chapter chairs, Mansi and Manu, where are you? And everyone who's come from all over the world to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, behind every great woman, there's a man. Three cheers to Dr. Vinay Rai. Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna thank again Raindrop Media and Rohini Ayer. But she's not here today, but she's awesome and she makes every event awesome. So thank you, Rohini. And I'd like to uh, thank Devadithi Foundation for their wonderful, wonderful performance on day one. And we'd like to honor them with certificates of appreciation wherever they are afterwards. Thank you, everyone. Friends, Tennyson said, men may come and men may go, but I go on forever. So said Tennyson many years ago, but he was talking about a river. Women may come and women may go, but she goes on forever. I'm not talking of a river. I'm talking of Harbin Arora. Three cheers to Harbin Arora. Hip hip. Hip hip. May her legacy live on and on. Thank you, Harbin, for this wonderful sixth day you made each one of us feel so special. God bless you and keep you ever and ever blessed. Thank you, dear.